a young 21-year-old woman went to the guillotine in Munich Stadham prison on February 22, 1943. On a chilly morning in February, the atmosphere inside the atrium of the University of Munich was tense and quiet. Hans Scholl, a 24-year-old medical student, and his 21-year-old sister Sophie arrived, carrying a suitcase not filled with books, but with bravery in the form of 1,700 anti-Nazi leaflets. It was February 18, 1943. Hans and Sophie didn't know yet, but they were about to step into history. Due to her efforts to oppose a cruel and harsh dictatorship that engulfed Germany and propelled them into the Second World War, she had received a death sentence. Since her capture, Sophie Shaw has been found guilty of high treason. She was a part of the White Rose organization, distributing anti-Nazi literature throughout a university. However, the executioner, who killed her and thousands of others, declared that she was the bravest person he had ever executed. On May 9, 1921, Sophie Shaw was born in Fortune, Germany. Her father was a politician and an opponent of the Nazis. He subsequently rose to prominence as the mayor of his hometown. She was raised with several siblings, attended the Ab Lutheran Church, and had a fairly good education. However, at the age of 12, she joined the League of German Girls, a female youth group and wing of the Nazi party, and she was initially very excited about this. Her brother Hans was considered a potential future leader of the Hitler Youth because he was likewise active in the organization. But after losing faith in the Nazi party, the two started to form their own political opinions. Naturally, it was extremely dangerous to oppose the Nazis in Germany at this time. Doing so may result in torture, execution, or even transfer to a concentration camp. But Sophie Shaw had a passion for art, which the Nazis viewed as corrupt. She was initially detained by the Gapo when she was barely 16 years old, and she read a broad variety of authors, many of whom had been outlawed. It had been found that her brother Hans had belonged to an anti-Hitler youth club, and these people would get together and oftentimes beat up Hitler youth members. Sophie and the other school siblings were apprehended at home, while Hans Shah was taken into custody at a military installation. Even though Sophie's first detention lasted just a few hours, it had a significant effect on her because her brother Hans was detained for three weeks and subjected to extensive interrogation. Despite this, Sophie remained anti-Nazi and started contributing her own opinions to political discussions with her friends. Hitler's strategy was to impose a harsh government on the German people and he would not put up with any opposition. The resistance groups in society would frequently vanish after being detained and given death sentences by the People's Court, which supported Nazi ideology. Those who disagreed with Hitler's beliefs and policies received scant leniency. Sophie Shaw completed her secondary education in 1940 and thereafter started teaching kindergarten. She was mandated to serve a six-month term as a nursery teacher abroad because she also sought to escape being drafted for the National Labour Service. She grew more open to engaging in passive resistance, so she enrolled in the University of Munich to pursue studies in biology and philosophy. She was attending with her brother Hans, who studied medicine, and the pair had a group of friends who had many shared interests. However, among them was a deep-seated antipathy to Nazism. Munich and Sophie Shaw got to meet a lot of other authors and artists who had a big impact on them. Munich also joined the White Rose Resistance Group as a full member. After her brother had discussed resistance to the Nazis with others, many like-minded people started engaging in passive resistance. However, Sophie and the White Rose went one step further and created propaganda and anti-Nazi leaflets. The group's activities started in June 1942 and Hans Shaw and Alexander Schmall wrote the first four defiance leaflets. In these literary works, the White Rose cited the Bible and other thinkers and urged the German people to reconsider surrendering to the Nazis. They also called for the destruction of National Socialism and Hitler. They were given out in phone books at phone booths to instructors and students, and they were dispersed at various colleges. Being a young woman, Sophie had less chance of being stopped by the Garrow in the SS when she disputed the propaganda, but the authorities would catch up with her within a year. 
Sophie wanted to get involved in the White Rose and dreamed of writing for the group and imprinting her own philosophical ideas out into the publications. Sophie and Hans Schau were at Ludwig Maximilian University on February 18, 1943, and they were carrying a suitcase full of pamphlets on white roses that they wanted to hand out. After witnessing some of them toss several leaves from the top floor of the staircase, Sophie, the Nazi-supporting janitor, informed the authorities about their actions. They attracted the wrong kind of attention and left piles of white rose pamphlets for the students to locate. After telling the gusto, Hans and Sophie were taken into custody. Although Sophie Shah attempted to conceal any evidence that could be used against her, the Garrow were able to obtain what they needed. If Robert Moore, the Garrow interrogator, believed him to be innocent, nevertheless, after her brother admitted to being a part of the resistance, Sophie took full responsibility for her acts in defying Hitler in an effort to save others. After that, she was brought before the People's Court, a terribly ignorant court, where she was charged with treason and tried by the terrifying Roland Frey. She also mentioned during the hearings that someone had to start the process. Many others agree with what we wrote and stated. They simply dare not express themselves in the same way as we did. Sophie was found guilty and given the death penalty on the same day that her trial started. She was not permitted to testify. The execution would subsequently take place many hours later. Johann Reichart, the executioner, performed her guillotine. Her parents were able to visit her prior to the execution. Sophie Shaw's last words were, Such a fine sunny day, and I have to go. But what does my death matter if through us thousands of people are awakened and stirred to action? He would later declare that she was the bravest person he had ever executed. She was one of several who defied Hitler and was executed at five o'clock in the evening in Stadelheim prison. At five o'clock in the evening, Sophie Shaw was led to the execution room at Stadelheim jail, where the Reich prosecutor was present. She was executed by guillotine. He would later claim that she was the bravest person he had ever executed. Sophie Shaw was brought towards the execution chamber and present was the Reich prosecutor and lost her head on the guillotine at 5 p.m. inside of Stadelheim prison. Sophie Shaw was led by two male prison officers to the execution chamber, where she was met by the Reich prosecutor, who was in charge of the guillotine, along with other officials, the prison warden, a government official, and the prison doctor. After her identity was verified, Jan Ralt, the executioner, brought her to the guillotine with the help of his helper. The board was slid beneath the guillotine blade with her fastened to it. Then, Reichardt let go of the blade, which landed squarely on her neck and severed her skull. It took only six seconds from the moment she was fastened to the guillotine until the blade dropped, and she died with remarkable serenity. From the moment she exited her cell until her death was pronounced, it took only 48 seconds. After that, her remains was put in a casket and interred in a grave close to Mudik's Stadheim prison. Even though Sophie Shaw's life ended horribly, she remained resolute in the face of Hitler and the Nazis and wished to encourage others to resist. Sophie Scholl's courage and moral conviction in the face of extreme danger have made her an enduring symbol of resistance against tyranny and oppression. Her story is one that shows that at such a young age, she had a huge amount of bravery and determination. Thank you for watching. To support, please subscribe.